Well, it is evident that um, our freshwater sources have dried up because of um, climate change. And this is not exclusive to Antigua and Barbuda. I believe you have a clip there in which um, mm -hmm. a young lady, um, or a Grenada. resident in um, Grenada, were lamenting the lack of water. And Grenada gets far more rainfall than Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, so here's a situation in which um, our freshwater sources are totally depleted not one gallon of water produced. So whereas they were producing, as they indicated, nearly a million gallons of water daily, there's nothing coming from that source. That's potworks. And there are other um, groundwater sources that um, would have produced at least maybe another million or two down daily. They're completely dry. So we have had to now make um, significant investments in uh, reverse osmosis water. And just like the fire trucks, we could not just go and buy a um, a reverse osmosis plant off the shelf. <laughs> we had to wait um, for some time and um, these plants, the more recent ones would have gotten delayed as a result of um, the logistical problems and COVID. Uh, so we have one now that I believe will arrive um, within the next two to three weeks. That's the Fort James plant and the civil works is advancing pretty good. So that plant should be installed by the end of June, no later than the middle of July. And then we will also have an additional 500,000 um, gallons a day added to that, I'd say by August. Uh, we also have the 3 million gallon a day plant that will be installed in Bethesda. That should be installed a year, PSA, by the end of the year. We want it done before the end of the year. Well, we want to call it actually in, um, in the November or October. Are you dropping so, hints here? Are you dropping hints? What I'm saying here, we want it installed by um, the end of September this later. So if you can get the facts right, um, this thing about the end of the year, this that's not good enough. Uh, so I'll make sure I call um, Mr. Martin and tell him, hey, that timeline is working for us. Uh, in any case, um, the point I'm making here is that, um, you know, um, we have made investment. We have spent over $100 million, I was saying it was about $130 million to build out all of these uh, reverse osmosis facilities to ensure water sustainability. Uh, we paid for these plants, they paid for already. Uh, we made investments, so whereas the UPP, um, they are fighting this water issue, they're going to lose um, the battle ultimately, um, or the war for that matter, because we have made investments, so the water problem will be resolved. And I don't know that we will be in a drought indefinitely, so after we install these plants, what if it rains late in the year as well and we have an abundance of water? What are they going to tell the people? They're going to still argue about water. I mean, during the period of um, COVID, leading up to what they expected to have been an early election in um, March, April of this year, mm. they argue on the issue of choice, uh, saying that Antiguans have no choice. Okay, fine. People have the choice of not getting vaccinated now. So that argument died a natural death. Then they said that um, people had no freedom because we had the mandates in place. We eliminated the mandates. That too died a natural death. So what has happened now, you know, that's really fall ground to put on um, table is their campaign. All of their campaign messages have literally fallen to the ground.